So uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Ebru Tylak and I focus on marketing at Uber Cloud. And uh, my background includes nearly 10 years in the computer aided engineering field. And uh, today I'm going to talk about some innovative use cases of HPC in the cloud for CAE applications featuring AI, CFD and life sciences. <laughs> So uh, there are three ingredients for uh, innovation through CAE. First one, uh, highly scalable CAE software, then engineering knowledge to build large detailed uh, models that are also scalable, and then uh, the last piece is HPC clusters to take advantage of high performance computing and uh, speed up simulations by manifold. So over time, uh, with the adoption of uh, parallel computing, CAE software has become uh, widely scalable. And then uh, with the acceptance of uh, CAE within different industries, uh, engineers uh, were able to get uh, more focused training on uh, simulation and modeling, and there was transfer of knowledge between engineers more uh, resources for learning were available. So today they have the necessary skills to uh, build very uh, detailed uh, large models that are also scalable. And uh, then the missing piece is uh, HPC clusters. So this is uh, still often uh, considered a privileged because these clusters are expensive. Also, uh, it is very, uh, difficult uh, to build and maintain these because it is not easy to find the uh, s people with the right skill set. So by realizing that a uh, scalable platform such as the cloud can be used to make uh, HPC widely available uh, to CAE engineers, in uh, 2012 Uber Cloud uh, started its cloud experiments and uh, so up to date, more than 200 experiments have been conducted. And uh, scientists, engineers, software vendors, cloud providers from all around the world uh, joined these experiments. Uh, basically, uh, here you can see some examples of these uh, experiments. These are basically studies taking uh, engineering simulations uh, within different disciplines to the cloud and then uh, looking at what are the challenges, what are the roadblocks, and uh, then sharing this uh, information. And uh, so every team uh, experienced different difficulties, but some common ones were related to uh, configuration of the machines, software installation, maintenance, and uh, usability. So based on these uh, findings, uh, in 2016, uh, Uber Cloud uh, launched the containers for uh, CAE uh, based on uh, Docker. And then by uh, starting to deploy these within these experiments, the average uh, project time came down from two to three months uh, to two to three days. So here are uh, some of the uh, benefits of the uh, containers for uh, CAE software. First of all, packageability. So CAE applications can be bundled together with their configuration files and their libraries uh, so that everything works together seamlessly and then uh, no installation is uh, required on the host machine. Uh, so it is, uh, makes the whole thing very easy. And then the next item is uh, portability. So once a container image is built, it can be easily uh, moved between different uh, hosts. And it can also be moved from a uh, development environment to a production environment uh, and so on. And then the next uh, benefit is accessibility. So uh, these, uh, con in these containers, uh, basically, uh, tools such as SSH for easy access or uh, VNC Viewer for remote desktop viewing can be uh, easily bundled in. And then uh, last but not least, usability. So this is a very important one uh, for the end users 
because uh, so with this solution, it means that uh, there is no uh, software in the middle, no additional tools to learn. There is no training required. And engineers, they can just continue using their existing workflow and work in a, a desktop-like uh, environment. So here I have a, a video recording for you. Uh, let me see how I can play this. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay, here it goes. Basically, this is the Uber Cloud environment, and what you saw was uh, a, a Jenga block was removed, and this is what happens right after. And uh, so this was uh, recorded working in the cloud environment. And this is simply amazing uh, because uh, until recently, uh, CAE engineers, they didn't have the uh, privilege to work remotely. But nowadays, so you can do your pre-processing or your post-processing just like you see in this example uh, from anywhere, thanks to the uh, advancements in the visualization technologies. So now uh, I'm going to talk about some of the uh, recent uh, use cases uh, we had. So uh, these demonstrate how the availability of HPC resources can uh, help drive innovation. So the first study is cloud simulations enabling deep learning for fluid flow prediction. And uh, so some background, uh, computational fluid dynamics uh, simulations uh, require lots of computational power. And also these take uh, long uh, simulation times. And as an alternative, uh, so a project team uh, consisting of uh, Renewmix and uh, Karlsruhe Institute and Advania Data Centers and Uber Cloud came together. And uh, they basically wanted to explore if it would be possible uh, to train uh, an artificial uh, intelligence uh, to predict the fluid flow of, uh, uh, around a given object. So the objective was basically uh, to decrease the time to solution uh, while uh, preserving the uh, accuracy of a traditional CFD solver. And then the challenge here was uh, to train the artificial neural network. A large uh, amount of data needed to be uh, generated for the training. And uh, so here uh, is the simulation setup. Basically, uh, the flow enters the simulation domain and goes around the uh, 2D object and then uh, exits uh, through the outlet. So a workflow was created uh, to create the simulation samples automatically and then feed them into the artificial neural network. So in the first uh, step, a random 2D uh, object is generated by a random shape generator. And uh, so these objects are uh, diverse enough so that the artificial neural network can uh, learn the dependencies uh, between the shape and the uh, flow around it. And then this is, a mode, uh, this is meshed and moved into a, a simulation template where a CFD simulation is performed on the object. And then post-processing uh, is done. Uh, and uh, basically, simulation results are uh, mapped into a two-dimensional uh, rectangular grid so that it can be easily uh, analyzed by the artificial neural network. And then these are all automatically uh, fed into the uh, input queue. Uh, so basically, simulation results and the shape of the object uh, into the input queue of the uh, neural uh, network. So uh, here I have some of the results. And uh, so the teams had to uh, train the network multiple times using different data samples to uh, get to the desired level of accuracy. And here, as an example, I'm showing you results for 10,000 simulations. So on the cloud environment, 10,000 simulations were completed in two hours and four minutes. And then it took the uh, neural network uh, to train 
uh, took about 23.7 hours. And then when the, once the network was uh, trained to accurately predict the, uh, the flow, once it was given an uh, arbitrary shape, it was able to identify the resulting flow in uh, three milliseconds. And the uh, average time for the CFD solver to solve the same problem on the cloud was 0 0.74 seconds. So uh, that's basically a speed up factor of uh, 246 with the artificial neural network prediction compared to the uh, results of the CFD simulation in the cloud. And here, uh, so you can see some results visually. So on the left, uh, there, are, there is the simulated flow field. And on the right, there is the uh, predicted flow field. So results look uh, very, very similar. Uh, so you can see the uh, flow uh, direction and then also the magnitude of the resulting velocity. There are like very minor differences you can notice when you look really uh, close up. And so the conclusion is basically uh, what the team found out was uh, so training of the uh, neural network was much faster using a large data set of samples. And also, uh, obviously, higher accuracy was obtained through large data set of samples compared to using a, a less uh, smaller data set of samples. And then, uh, so one uh, key conclusion is that the overhead of uh, creating the high uh, volume of samples can easily uh, compensate it by running the uh, simulations to generate the training data in the uh, HPC cloud. And this is the uh, second uh, use case I am presenting. It is cloud simulation of neuromodulation in schizophrenia. And currently, 1% uh, of the world's population uh, basically is affected by this. And uh, there are different treatment methods, including drugs, therapy, and also uh, deep brain stimulation. And an illustration is shown on the uh, figure on the uh, left side. And this method involves uh, drilling a hole into the person's head and then placing some electrodes through that hole to, uh, to uh, drive the uh, desired stimulation in the brain. And uh, I mean, obviously, this is a very high risk procedure. And then as an alternative, a new method was developed, which is called the uh, transcranial direct current stimulation. And this is a non-invasive procedure. So and the, uh, you can see it in the other image. Basically, here two electrodes are uh, placed on the, uh, on the head of the person. And then again, uh, through the uh, desired uh, the desired uh, stimulation is produced through applying some uh, electric fields to the head. And then one uh, challenge here is that uh, this method uh, requires to be personalized because uh, every person's head shape and then brain morphology is different. So this project was uh, done in collaboration with the uh, National Institute of Mental Health and Neuroscience in Bangalore, uh, Dassault Systems, Advania Data Centers, and then Uber Cloud. The objective was uh, to develop a method so that the uh, clinician can go and in real time, uh, they can choose the, between two pre-computed electric fields and then uh, stimulate the uh, desired uh, region uh, of the brain to get the uh, desired outcome. And uh, the challenge was, uh, again, uh, as I mentioned before, since every person's uh, skull shape and uh, brain uh, shape are different, uh, so it, was, uh, it needed to be uh, customized. And here's the uh, workflow on how this was done. So first of all, the head of the person is uh, scanned to a, through an MRI. And then a 3D model is generated. And a computational model based on this is created. 
and then electrodes are uh, placed on the on the head shape based on this uh, electrode placement chart you're seeing here and then uh, the uh, desired electric fields are applied and then uh, the uh, outcome can be analyzed uh, in means of uh, which regions of the brains are uh, stimulated. So here you can see an example of some of the uh, simulation outcomes on the uh, left. And uh, so the simulations and uh, the results are uh, as follows. So basically, uh, for this use case, 26 different simulations had to be run, each simulating a different uh, placement for the uh, electrodes. And uh, so these were large models, each containing about 1.8 million elements. And just for c comparison uh, purposes, a single run on a local cluster with uh, 16 cores took about 75 uh, minutes. And then on the uh, cloud uh, HPC cluster with 24 cores, uh, it took 28 uh, minutes. So uh, that being said, here actually the greater benefit comes from uh, running all the 26 simulations simultaneously. Uh, so by running all of these simultaneously, uh, the simulation time comes down from uh, 32 hours to 28 minutes, uh, which gives us a speed up factor of 70. And now, uh, so imagine uh, when you go to a doctor's office in under uh, 30 minutes, they can uh, get your personalized uh, results and uh, apply a treatment based on that. And uh, so if you're wondering what are the next steps uh, for the future of this study, uh, so results are of course promising, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And currently uh, Nimhans and other uh, research and, uh, organizations on, are working on how this can be uh, fine tuned for uh, real world use. And uh, that basically uh, brings me to the end of my presentation. Now uh, I can take some questions. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, I don't uh, know exactly uh, those details, but I can uh, provide you with that information. But basically what the team was trying to match was uh, the, uh, so they took the resulting uh, velocities and then mapped them into a 2D uh, grid. And they were uh, trying to match the uh, shapes and the uh, dimensions of the resulting uh, vectors. But a detailed, I mean more detailed information is uh, available in a report and I can share uh, with you that information.